Okay, I know what you're thinking. Where the crab if Dino Force Brave? Well, it's gonna come eventually, but a whole bunch of stuff's been happening, and uh, I had to get new recording equipment. I want to talk about this stuff first. So, a couple of months ago, I uploaded this video called Hello Hero Boss Music, and it was just the actual OST. In the description, I mentioned how I was pushed out of the spotlight thanks to Motor Grab Incorporus, yada yada yada. The video is one dislike, not because the video or description had anything wrong in it, but because some guy was so salty with my high quality reps that they then decided to dislike every single video I have. On to the topic, Hello Hero Epic Battle, the sequel, has recently been showing off a whole bunch of stuff, and it's expected to be released this year. I don't think I've actually been this hyped before, not with Bravely Second, not with the Tobot movie, not with Kamen Rider Spectre, nothing really. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there and I've decided to put together a what we know now video of it. This would probably be a bit more complete if I had gone to PlayX for a Kintex, but thanks SAT subject tests! Luckily, a few gaming news sites posted some gameplay footage for me to work with, but unfortunately there's a bunch of stuff that I still don't know because I wasn't actually there! We. So onto the list. Number one, this game takes place 15 years after the first one. When I first saw the promotional material last year, I thought that this was a reboot, assuming that this character right here is Harold, and this one possibly Ophelia. However, further details have revealed that that's not the case. The game is set 15 years after Hello Hero as a direct sequel. This is why the first game hasn't actually been shut down yet, because FinCon wants to keep the story flowing. Number two. Gameplay is mostly the same, but it's been slightly altered. The footage shows that several different changes were made to the formula. The biggest notable change is that the fact that the game is now played vertically. This is because FinCon initially had both vertical and horizontal support, but they decided to change it because it would take more time than it already has so far, and most test players were using vertical mode anyway. If you look at the menu, a bunch of different options exist, although what's used for which has yet to be determined. Interestingly, there is no longer an energy meter. My guess is that they deemed it unnecessary because nobody ever actually uses energy. Onto the actual gameplay itself, you've still got the auto and repeat functions, but there's now a time limit, and there's no longer a 2 times or 4 times option. There's also two bars up here, likely representing the remaining health on your side and the opponent's side. During battle, instead of static characters hitting random opponents one by one, each character now has an arrow pointing towards the opponent they've locked onto, and then they duke it off from there. There's a bit of correlation through the Super Sentai battle-based deluxe game, which closed down in 2016, but it still feels like Hello Hero overall. Stuff like specials and the critical close-ups remain the same. Now here's where things get interesting. The arena has been completely redone. Here's what the battle arena looks like. The way this works is that each character is let out one by one to duke it out, so the arena matches last longer, likely to balance out the lag of an energy bar. Lastly, each character is given customization options. I actually wanted to see that since the accessories were announced way back in 2013, so it's great to see that the dream is actually becoming a reality. Number 3. They have a professional writer on their team. They're really going all out on this one. The writer is Mr. Shin Tehun, who created the popular webcomic GA- how do I cr how do crap do I say this in English? Uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, Mental Rope? Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, well, all you need to know is that it was popular enough to get a TV series. Either way, he's handling the main plot and all the side stories. It's good to see they got someone who knows what he's doing, and not some amateur has literally never written a comic since 5th grade. <laughs> he's also expressed interest in releasing a comic series for the game. Deep, deep breaths. Deep breaths. They, they can both coexist in the same space, I mean, might have probably be forgotten forever, but... Number 4. This game uses what space play amiibos. Way back in August, I think, FinCon announced their collaboration with Aura World to produce smart toys, basically amiibos, for the series. What's interesting is that, from what I can tell, Aura World mostly specializes in plushies, but given the sample they are shown at Play Explorer, they've done a pretty good job. Number 5. The following new characters have been given names. Before Plague's 4, the known named characters are the main character Leo, the gen mid-boss Turungi, and the mascot-ish character Marble. Recent gameplay footage has shown an assortment of new characters with the following names. Ariel, Elisa, Bunny, Sonya, Avadin, Raku, Knight Richard, Cherry Bear, and this one I'm not so sure about. As a side note, here's a bunch of early monster sketches. I'm not gonna bother going into detail because I don't know if these are actually gonna be greenlit for the final project. Number 6. Here are the characters that are likely to appear. Let's talk about some of the characters that are likely to return. I say likely because after my initial assumption of the first picture, I can never be sure anymore. This screenshot here shows that appears to be a glowing dragon character. While it appears that the entire thing has actually been brightened, the only other dragon character with this shade of orange would be Nidhogg, who isn't very well received, so the logical conclusion is that this is Agnid. Next, this screenshot. It's just Leo, Marble, and an assortment of other characters, but this one right here is almost certainly Tom. This next particular character has been in my eye for quite some time now. The color palette has changed, but look at her. Same hat with a cat, same wand. The clothing is different, but remember that this is 15 years later, so... I think this is actually Sophia or Isis, you know, one of the two magical girl sisters. Since 15 years later, they would probably no longer be younger children. I think 
it's likely Isis because one of the character's attacks appears to be a lightning related skill. Now, King would theoretically make sense in all manners. The design seems to be about right, and he was one of the most popular characters in the original release. However, we only have the backside, and I'm not quite sure if this buff here is actually the provoked skill. And lastly, here's a picture of what might be Sphinx. Maybe, possibly. Number 7. Now, here are the characters that have been confirmed to return. Ophelia was revealed to return as a character sketch. Someone mentioned she might just be an NPC to take the role of her older sister, but this photo from Play Explorer shows her in an alternate costume, confirming that she will once again be playable. Her two skills are a healing move and, interestingly enough, an attack move. Among the promotional material for Play X4, it is made known that the Spiral cast will be cosplaying as Hello Hero characters. From here, they outright say that one of the characters is, in fact, Maid Emma. At the same time, they released a photo of her redesign. There's no actual imagery of what it looks like now, but Lloyd's been confirmed through text shown in the screenshot. Next up, Shaken. Uh, I was initially unsure of whether it's actually him, because although the head matches up, the rest of the body doesn't. Play X4 footage actually confirms that it's him. Although the actual footage had him die quickly, I mean, really quickly. His signature move, the Armor of Darkness, has been confirmed to remain. Eric is basically confirmed with the original gameplay trailer. His design is almost identical and he still has his flaming blade attack. From the looks of it, he acts as Lyra's mentor, likely after he removed from his position in the original game. Harold's also been confirmed, interesting enough, back to a defense character, and one of his skills is called Blade of Judgment. This actually gets kind of confusing, I'll talk about that later. And finally, Pintaris is back, as shown in the gameplay screenshot. The initial screenshot doesn't actually say that it's him, but again, Play X4 footage to surface confirms that it's definitely the original world boss. So far from what we've seen, Mental Breakdown is retained but renamed to Brick Break, while a new skill called Battle Cry replaces Cattle Driving Song as a defense debuff move. He also has a full bombardment move, a move that hits all of your characters, and a waste toss move, which... You know what? I'll let this one speak for itself. Oh, by the way, the artists are back, but nobody really gives a crap about them. Now, something that's been on my mind... Number 8. Who's the villain here? I thought I was not a lead here for a while now, but apparently not. In the gameplay trailer, the menu shows this character right here, and if you follow the basic gameplay tropes, that's an antagonist. Pay close attention to his design. This is the same Herald wearing an ominous helmet that we've looked at upon entering the original game for over a year. But he's also been confirmed as a playable character, so what's going on here? There is an alternate color palette called Dark Knight Herald, but it doesn't look remotely like the helmet ring soldier we've seen before. However, one of the new characters, namely Abaddon, has a body build that's suspiciously like the Karonix, so he might have something to do with the plot. Alright, that's a whole bunch of stuff, but plot-wise we still don't have any information on, say, Eren or any of the Karonix. Are they holding this information back? Who knows. Overall, this is a bunch of stuff that gets me hyped while keeping me with questions and wanting more, which is the perfect balance. Unlike Tawai, who literally spoils everything weeks before it happens.